So your first 30 days of coding, maybe you're looking at the news or you're looking into the market and you're starting to see that our world is becoming more and more digital. And if it's becoming more and more digital, a lot of businesses are shifting and starting to use more digital products, more digital services, and maybe they're just starting to shift a lot of their stores online. And so what does that mean for you? That means that there's a lot of software development job opportunity in the market right now. And not only that, we're starting to see a lot of interest in the software development industry. And because of that, there's a lot of resources out there that are helping people become better programmers. But because there are so many resources out there, it can be kind of overwhelming to know which programming languages to focus on and which tools to focus on. So in this video, I hope to explain a very simple plan that will help you start learning how to code in the next 30 days and give you a good foundation for your software development journey. This is where I'd start if you're one of my clients and you had no coding experience, this is the plan I would give you. And if you stick to the end of this video, I will show you step-by-step step how to code your first program. So let's get started. All right, day one. First, you need to figure out your first programming language. And the way you figure that out is by figuring out which software development field you wanna get into. There's a lot of different software development fields out there. There's web development, UI, UX design, machine learning, data analysis, Android development, game development, and embedded software development. Each field has their own set of languages that they really like to use. So you really need to figure out which field you're gonna get into, and ba based on that, then you can choose which language you're gonna learn. So how do you figure out which field you're gonna get into? I really like the passion skills market model. Basically, you take the intersection of your passion, which are the things that you're really interested in, the things that you're naturally geared towards, and then you take your skills, which is the things you're naturally good at, and then the market, you look at the market, what are the needs? Maybe you look into your community and maybe you're looking in your city, see what the employers are looking for. What are the soft kinds of software jobs in your area that, that people are looking for? And if you can find an intersection with those jobs and the things that you're good at and the things that you're passionate about, then that's the software development field that you wanna get into. But if you can't figure out on day one which software development field you're gonna get into, I always recommend that beginners learn C. And that's because C is a programming language that really teaches you to think the way that the computer thinks. It really helps you think and understand how computers work. A lot of people may recommend Python over C, and that's because Python is a really simple language to learn, and it's really powerful at the same time. It's very versatile, you can use it in different kinds of industries but I still recommend C over Python, and that's because C help, really helps you understand how computers think. If you start coding in Python and you, you become good at Python, you may develop some bad coding practices, but if you had learned C first, and then you went to Python, you will understand how the computer really thinks under the hood, how it's actually doing things with the data that you're giving it, then you can start to code better Python code. So this was my experience when I was learning how to code. I started off learning C. When I got to my company, they were okay that C was the only language that I knew. They asked me to code in C++, but they knew that I could do it because I had a background in C. So I started off coding in C++ and I was able to do it because of my background in C. They were pretty similar, but then they moved me to another project where I had to code in Python, C++, and Java and they put me in charge of the GUI application. So every time we had GUI updates, I had to code in Java, I had to learn Java. And that was that was pretty simple for me to learn because of my background, like I said. And then after they after that project, they moved me to another project where they where I coded mostly in Python and I was able to do that. And then they code, they put me in another project where I had to learn web development. So I started learning JavaScript. And then after about five or six years, I thought I would never code in C again. They put me on a project where I had to code in C. Then I went to my second job and I had a good background in C++, Python, JavaScript, and Java. And they asked me to code in C Sharp. I had no experience in C Sharp, but that I was able to code in C Sharp. So all that to say is my background in C really helped me learn these other languages. I think it's really hard for someone who only coded in Python and Java to start coding in C. And I think that's harder. I mean, I think it's possible, but it's harder to do it that way than to start with C first and learn those other languages. So I recommend that beginners learn C, but I want to give you some comfort that your first programming language probably doesn't really matter that much. And that's because a lot of the programming concepts you learn in one language will transfer over to the other languages. Eventually, as you get more software development experience, you don't think of yourself as a C programmer, C Sharp programmer, Java programmer. You just think of yourself as a software developer who can code in whatever language is necessary. So that's day one. 
or maybe week one. But after you figure out your first language, you want to set up a coding plan. And what I mean by coding plan is you need to have a system for how you are going to go about learning your programming languages. That may mean you develop a plan where you lay out which programming languages, tools and frameworks you're going to learn. But I also mean what is your coding week going to look like? There's this really popular book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And one of the main principles of that book is that if you make small incremental changes to your daily routine, that can lead to long lasting success over time. One of the quotes that really stuck out to me is this quote that says, you don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. And what I really like about that quote is that it teaches you not to focus so much on these big audacious goals, but rather to focus on the systems that you're putting in place to help you reach that goal. And if you really think about it, everyone has the same kind of goal. Everyone has that goal, but not everyone is successful. What really helps people become successful is that they have these systems in place that they develop these habits that even if they don't they don't feel like it they don't have the motivation to do it they're able to do it because it's part of their routine when they have that routine it really helps propel them to reach that goal so what you really want to do is build these atomic habits for your coding plan you want to have a healthy mixture of theory and practice you don't want to just watch a bunch of tutorials and keep watching tutorials and then never putting it into practice. That's kind of like watching people learn, watching people swim, teach you how to swim, but then you never go to the pool and learn how to swim yourself. If you wanna learn how to swim, you really need to put those things that you learned into practice and get into the pool. And on the flip side, you don't wanna just keep coding and coding and coding. Otherwise, you'll just be coding the same kinds of programs, same kinds of projects, but you're not developing at all. So develop that coding plan or schedule where you figure out how you're going to code consistently and regularly throughout the week. You don't want to just say that you're going to code on Saturday morning for three hours and then the rest of the week you never look back at your code. If you do that, then you'll forget what your code is doing and then you'll forget a lot of concepts and then you'll have to relearn things. If you code consistently and regularly, you'll have that momentum of learning and you'll be able to learn a lot faster. All right, so that's set up your coding plan. So maybe that's day two, maybe day one, you figure out your programming language. Then day two, you set up your coding plan. Then for the next 28 days, you have four weeks, you build your first four projects. So here's where you download my 30 day beginner coding challenge and you can download it in the link in the description. And in that challenge, I teach you each week, I give you some tutorial videos. And then after you watch those tutorial videos, you apply it into practice and you code a programming project for that week. So these four projects are just toy projects where you're just learning how the programming language works. And they're just fun projects that you can learn. So after the 30 days, you build these four projects and you're proud of them. And then they give you some ideas on your own personal projects that you can build on in the future. So this 30 day beginner coding challenge really gives you a good foundation for your software development journey. All right, before we go into the tutorial portion of this video, I wanna help you out with two tips as you're learning how to code these four projects. All right, so the first tip is after each project, you wanna get feedback on your code. You don't wanna be coding these projects and have bad coding practices. You want someone else to look at your code also and give you some feedback. So maybe you hire a mentor like me to look at your code and I can give you feedback. Or if you don't wanna hire a mentor, you can also look online and see examples of other projects and then see how other people have coded these kinds of projects. And then you can learn from that and then take what you learned from that and apply it to your project that you just coded. Or you can also go online and find some coding communities like Stack Overflow or Reddit. And then you can go in these communities and you can put your code there and ask, see if there's someone out there who will look at your code and give you some feedback and a review of your code. Getting feedback is really important, especially when you're starting off, because a lot of times your code may work, but you may have some bad coding practices in there. Like in my experience, I was coding a lot in my first job, and I would after I would code these features, I would fix these bugs, I would submit it for a code review, and the higher, more senior developers would look at my code and point out a lot of flaws and a lot of bad coding practices in them. All right, my second tip for you is, as you're building these programming projects, you should also learn Git at the same time. And if you don't know what Git is, it's just a tool for developers to help keep track of different versions of their code. Code oftentimes becomes very complex and it's hard to keep track of everything. So a lot of times you can inadvertently mess up your code 
And when that happens, you want to be able to revert back to a more stable version of your code. So you want to start learning how to use Git early on because this is how a lot of developers collaborate on code together. Git is also helpful when you're programming your personal projects because it helps you code incrementally, which makes your code more stable and more robust. All right, now let's go into the tutorial portion. I'm just gonna show you quickly how to code your first program. All right, let's create a new file. We'll just call it hello.c. And this is Visual Studio Code. You can download it for Mac or Windows or Linux. And it's just a development environment where you can code your programs and also run it at the same time. And I'll show you an example of how you can do that here. Here's Visual Studio Code's website. You can just click here to download it. And then you can download it for your specific OS. I'm using Mac, so I downloaded it here. All right, so for your first program, the tradition of the software development world is that you code your first Hello World program. So we're going to build the Hello World program. All right, first we're going to include the standard library, which is just called stdio.h. So this library, you don't have to worry about it too much, but basically it just has functions in there that we usually use in our programs. All right, next we're going to include our main function. All right, so this block of code is just the main function and this is the entry point of your program. So your program, the first line that it'll execute is this line of code, whatever is in line four. And in line four, what we want to do is just print the phrase, hello world. And then we add an end of line character, which is this one. And you'll see in a moment what that's for. And then we have to end our line of code with a semicolon. And then every function needs a return value. So you do return zero. We're just going to return zero to our function. And that's it. That's your first program. So let's run it. And ta-da, it says hello world. So the end of line character here is, is right here. You can't see it, but it just tells your program to hit enter so that the next series of characters comes in the next line. So if we add another end of line character here, we'll have another, we'll have a space, a blank line here. So you see there's a blank, blank line here because we told the program to enter a new line. So that's what that new line character is all about. All right, so that's it. That's your first program. Maybe you can, instead of saying world, we can say hello YouTube. And then that's your hello YouTube program. So you run it and then it says hello YouTube instead of hello world. And that's it. All right, so that's it. That's your first 30 days of coding. You first figure out your first language. Then you come up with a coding plan. Then you download my 30 day beginner coding challenge and I'll help you more there. And then you come up, you follow my other tips, which is to get feedback on your code. And then you start using Git and you can watch my other tutorials on Git if you need any help there. All right, what about you? What are your next steps for the coming year? I'd love to hear your thoughts and what kinds of systems and plans you're going to put in place to help you get started in your software development journey. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it really helped you out. And if it did, please like, share, and subscribe to the video. And if you have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comments section and I'll be sure to answer you there. And I'll see you in my 30 day beginner coding challenge. Peace.